John Steinazen is in hot water. This week was an interesting week for the Democratic Alliance because on one side, they've had victories. And on the other side, they remain with some losses that take away from their overall performance and in particular, as it relates to the performance of the leader of the party. So the victories that the DA has won have related to them being able to block Dr. John Tlope from participating in the JSC hearings, the Judicial Service Commission, which chooses judges and which was choosing a variety of judges in this week which just passed. So that was a big victory. They didn't want him there because they were part of voting to impeach uh, Dr. John Tlope earlier this year when he was still Judge John Tlope and the Western Cape Judge President because of the findings which were made against him by a JSC committee which was looking into um, his conduct. So they won that fight. But at the same time that they just got out of winning that fight, John Steinazen may have got himself into hot water because of his attempts to employ certain individuals into his ministerial office. This is aside from the controversy which came from the employment and then the dismissal of Roman Kabanak, who was dismissed but is still at work um, because he's negotiating for a payout. He's saying, listen, you can't just chase me. I signed a contract. You employed me fair and square. I went through the, vo the vetting process. So you need to actually pay me to leave because I got a family and kids to support. And Roman Kabanak was criticized by the media for various statements that he made um, on his social media pages and on his podcast. So um, that's a different issue, right? As I make this video, the Office of the Minister of Agriculture right now may have zero staff members working there, which makes me wonder and really want to put a question to you. Are any of these staff members really necessary or is it just a matter of different ministers' egos and wanting to have people around them so that they can feel like they're busy, they're working and they're ordering people around? Why aren't these, why aren't the ministers just using the stuff that exists in the department. They set up a separate office with people who work for them. And it doesn't seem like these offices are valid. Think about it. Ministers have now been in office for over 100 days. And in that 100 days, John Steinazen hasn't had a staff member except for the one Roman Kabanak. He has 11 positions that he needs to fill. And they cost about 10 million rands a year. So the effective cost of a minister's office, excluding the deputy minister's office, is 50 million in administration, not including the cost of the minister themselves. If you were to actually total it up, you would find that each minister costs upwards of 60 million rands in administration. Then the question is, as the cabinet gets bigger and bigger, are all of those ministers necessary? Are all of those staff members necessary? So if you missed the story and all of the stuff preceding it, on the 16th of August, John Steinhazen sent a letter to uh, a different minister trying to get deviations for four people. So what are deviations? Deviations are basically, um, and this was sent to the Minister of Public Service and Administration. Deviations are attempts to change the rules and request for flexibility for the appointment of particular people. So he tried to get deviations for four people. Number one, a former DA member of parliament who is now a farmer, Annette Stain, for, for her to become his special, uh, his special advisor. Number two, his personal assistant, Una Christians, the, the uh, personal assistant from the DA. And then also, number three, the spokesperson, to the federal leader of the Democratic Alliance, Charity McCord, and number four, a gentleman known as Mr. Kruger. All four of these individuals do not meet the minimum requirements for the roles that he wanted them to work in. So Stain, he wanted her to work as a special advisor. He wanted Una Christians to become his, the minister's private and appointment secretary, basically his PA. He wanted Charity McCord to work as the ministry's media liaison office, and he wanted Kruger to work as the parliamentary liaison officer. So all of these four individuals do not meet the minimum requirements stipulated in the Public Service Act. 
And then Kruger himself lacks the number of years of experience to be appointed in these positions. So DA wins this. Um, so what am I saying? So I mentioned one of the victories around the DA being that they blocked Dr. Don Chope from participating in the JSC. But another victory that they won just um, in the last week as well is this case of cater deployment as it pertains to the ANC. And they were celebrating this particular win on social media. The DA has been fighting with the ANC about cater deployment for a while. And last week, on the 4th of October, they got a judgment where the ANC's application for live to appeal was dismissed and was dismissed with, with costs. The DA has been trying to get documents as they relate to how has the ANC been doing cater deployment, who has deployed, where and why. And they've been trying to get these documents from the ANC since 2021. And the ANC has been stonewalling since 2021 and it's gone to court a variety of times. I think this particular judgment was maybe the fourth uh, time that this issue had been at a court and each time the ANC has lost and judges have said, give the DA the documents, the ANC tried different ways. They've lost multiple times. And in fact, when the court dismissed this urgent application, what they said was the following, right? The um, applicants were found to be in civil contempt. This court made an order in respect thereof together with ancillary uh, relief, an order whereby the ANC was to pay the cost of the agent application on the scale of attorney and client, such as to include the cost of two counsel. This kind of a cost order is a very harsh order from the from the courts. And they're saying, listen, you're being frivolous. You're being, um, you know, wasteful of the court's time. And you are really, uh, you know, frustrating and abusing the legal system to try to actually buy more time for yourselves. And as a result of this, the ANC has this very harsh cost order. So the DA won this case. On cater deployment, they are supposed to get the documents. Figuel Mbalula is supposed to be putting documents in the box, sending them to the, to the DA about cater deployment. The DA is opposed to cater deployment. They view it as one of the three things that have ruined South Africa, the other two being crime and corruption. The party identifies itself as a liberal party and says that it supports meritocracy and that the best and most qualified people should be hired for government jobs, not piles, not party members. That is the principle that they stand for. Now they have a problem, a contradiction, a challenge. This is not what the party leader, John Stainazen, has been doing. The same time that they were celebrating winning this cater deployment case, the same time that they were celebrating blocking John Chlope from participating in um, the JSC hearings, some answers to questions that were sent by members of parliament started trickling in. And these questions are going to put John in a little bit of trouble. In fact, he may end up having to go to the ethics committee or having the public pro uh, protector investigate him. One or two, or one, of, one of those things or both of those things are likely to happen. So the questions that were sent were about the DA minister's appointment of people he wanted in his office, or if you will, cater's. Before I tell you this question and what was and how it got John into trouble, the interesting thing to know about this question is that it actually came from a former DA leader and now member of parliament, Four Eyes Mzansi Magashule Ghana. So <laughs> the DA is being given a hard time this week by its own products, if you think about it. Dr. Nasipa Moya left the DA in 2021 and is now mayor for Twane for Action SA. Trained by the DA, had a lot of positions within the DA, worked with the DA. Now she's uh, under Action SA. Magashule Kana left in 2022 and now he's exposing John Steinhazen. His former leader. And in fact, the other question around the how we know that John hasn't employed anybody uh, or that he only employed one person came from another former DA leader, Musi Maimane, because he was the one who actually asked the first question to say, how much are people earning? How many have you employed? That was answered. 
If you think about it, if the DA had just kept its talent, they wouldn't be having some of these headaches and they would be on 30% easily and perhaps even more. That's something that we must not forget in this GNU euphoria honeymoon because a lot of times we just focus on how these parties got in and we don't often think or speak about the DA and its own performance. They could be on 30, 35 if they hadn't actually orchestrated some of their own goals which led them to a crisis that they're facing right now. Think about this. Let's say that we went into this election, the 2020, 2024 election with Musi Maimane, with John Staines and with Herman Mashaba. The DA would have gotten 35%. They would have really been flying on all cylinders because it would have been an easy election. And then if MK had emerged, ah, that would have just worked quite well for them. But they, they didn't manage to hold everything together and it's still giving them problems up to now. So what was the question that was asked by Magashule Kana, right? He asked a question uh, on the 13th of September. The answer came in th this week, right? Um, the question that he asked, I want to read it here. It wasn't to John, but it exposed John. So Mr. S.M. Ghana, to ask the Minister of Public Service and Administration, I'm reading the question now, regarding the staff appointed to support ministers and deputy ministers, what total number of ministers have asked for deviations from the Public Servi Service Act 103 of 1994 to appoint candidates who do not meet the minimum requirements for the specified jobs? And are the relevant details of specified ministers who asked for such deviations since the 3rd of July 24 available? And then lastly, he asked, what were the total number of deviations that were approved or declined by the department and what were the reasons specified in each case. So the minister responded to this. This is the minister of um, public service and administration. And he said the following, right? The minister for the public service and administration issued the directive on human resource management and development for the public service professionalization volume one, which came into effect on the 1st of April, 2024. Directive prescribes the following. Clause 1.4 provides, sorry, 1.14 provides the inherent requirements for the appointment into senior management service posts. A chief director or director needs a qualification at NQF level 7 as recognized by the South African Qualifications Authority level. Clause 1.15 stipulates the minimum years of experience for entry into senior management uh, positions. And it requires that if you're going in at level 13 to 50, level 13, you need five years of experience at middle or senior management levels. If you're going into level 14, you need five years of experience at senior managerial level. If you're going into level 15, you need eight years of experience at senior managerial level. If you're going in at level 15, which is a HOD post, you need 10 years experience at a senior managerial level. Level 16, 10 years experience at a senior managerial level. Then he went into the specifics now. Regarding the staff appointed to support ministers and deputy ministers, three ministers have requested deviations from Directive Volume 1 to appoint candidates who do not meet the requirements for the specif uh, specified jobs. The relevant details of the specified ministers who asked for such deviations since the 3rd of July 2024 are as follows. Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Water and Sanitation, Minister of Minerals and Petroleum Resources. The Minister for Public Service and Administration did not approve any deviations and declined all deviations. So three were declined from the Ministry of Agriculture for minimum qualifications, one for years of experience. The Water and Sanitation Minister Pemi, uh, Pemi Majotina also applied. One of her people didn't uh, have qualifications. Uh, Gwede Mantashe Mineral and Petroleum also applied. One of his people did not have the minimum qualification. Now, that's the answer. And some of that we already knew. But the EFF is now saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And this is what they're saying. So the EFF is saying, actually, we also asked John a question, but 
He lied to us. The EFF is saying that when they asked the Minister of Agriculture a member's question, he was not truthful. And, they, and because of that, they're going to refer John Stainhazen to the Ethics Committee for lying about unqualified advisors to his office. The EFF is alleging that Mr. Stainhazen provided false information. And this false information was in a parliamentary session where they questioned him about whether he had deviated from standard recruitment, recruitment policies when appointing four advisors who reportedly lacked the necessary educational qualifications and experience. At the time, John Stainazen categorically denied any wrongdoing, claiming that all appointments complied with the relevant regulations. However, the EFF is now saying that that statement was at best misleading and at worst a lie. Right. So Leanne Matthews, uh, the EFF spokesperson, said it is evident that he knew full well that unqualified individuals were actively working in his ministry and pursuing payment for their services. Matthews said Steinhazen had even sent a letter to the public administration minister requesting a deviation from the Public Service Act to legitimize these appointments. What the EFF is arguing is that Steinhazen had a lack of transparency and honesty regarding these appointments, and that undermines the integrity of the government. Matthews is saying, instead of being forthright about the situation, Steinhazen chose to mislead parliament and, by extension, the people of South Africa. In light of these issues, the EFF has then said that they are going to take, uh, so they've concluded that Steinhazen's actions reflect a pattern of patronage and disregard for the rule of law, deeming him unfit for ministerial office. They're basically saying this guy is trying to put cadres and he's putting cadres who are unqualified and he's also lying about it. So what was the EFF question? The EFF sent this particular question on the 6th of September. And it was asked by Sinao Tambo, right? Here's the question. Whether he deviated from the normal appointment... Sorry, so let me start over with this question. Mr. S. Tambo, to ask the Minister of Agriculture whether he deviated from the normal recruitment policies for advisors and staff in his office by appointing four individuals who lack either the educational requirements for appointment, the requisite experience for appointment, and or both. If not, what is the position in this regard? If so, what are the relevant details? The answer that was sent back from the Minister of Agriculture was the following. There has been no deviation from the normal recruitment and selection of advisors and staff in the office of the Minister of Agriculture. Hmm. Let's go back, read the question again one more time. Mr. S. Tambo, to ask the Minister of Agriculture whether he deviated from the normal recruitment policies for advisors and staff in his office by appointing four individuals who lack either the educational requirement for appointment, the requisite experience for appointment, and or both. If not, what is the position in this regard? If so, what are the relevant details? Answer from the Minister of Agriculture. There has been no deviation from the normal recruitment and selection of advisors and staff in the, in the office of the Minister of Agriculture. So technically, this is correct, but there are some ethical quest issues here because he attempted to get them appointed, but that was rejected. So he's not providing detail, and this is what the EFF is now saying is misleading because they're saying, we asked you to give us details about people you're trying to get appointed. You're saying no one was appointed, therefore there's no problem, there's nothing to see here. It's almost like when they asked... Um, Bill Clinton, if he had had sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky and he said, I had no sexual relations with that woman. And then later when it turned out that he had had some fellatio, what he then said was, well, I don't consider fellatio to be part of what you would consider sexual relations per se. His definition of sexual relations was, well, if there's no, you know, penetration, then uh, there's no, uh, uh, you know, sexual relation, so to speak. And this is what Bill Gates was saying. It was technically a sound answer, but it was ethically 
an answer which people found to be a politician playing the game of politics. So here, they are now saying that because of this answer, they are going to take him to the ethics committee. John Steinhazen responded saying, no, they can't take me to the ethics committee. They should perhaps take me to the office of the public protector. Either way, either way, he didn't answer in a very truthful manner. And this is the kind of stuff that takes away from the performance of the DA in terms of their current, um, you know, wicket. They've been doing well in a variety of places, but this stuffing issue continues to come back to haunt John Steinhazen. It's unclear to me why he didn't find people within his party who are qualified. The DA has millions of voters. The DA has thousands of people working for them. They have so many people in um, leadership positions, people who have master's degrees in fi finance and communications, etc. I don't know why John just didn't pick people from his organization who meet the criteria, why he tried to hire people who particularly are just three people with matric. Some people have said it's because he feels comfortable around them. He doesn't feel, you know, that sense of inadequacy because I don't know if you know or don't know, he himself is only in possession of a matric certificate that is his highest education um, level. So some people are saying, well, he doesn't have a lot of corporate experience. You know, he was a dog shampoo salesman and that was his last job before he got into politics formally. So this particular administrative job is more like an office job, right? It's not party politics per se. It's now you're dealing with office type of stuff, HR type of stuff as well. And so they say maybe he feels more comfortable with having the matrix around him because he doesn't feel like these people can, you know, come up with information that he may not be privy to. I don't know if that's the reason. I really don't know. But he does, the party has so, I think the DA probably has 100 people or more with master's degrees and some with PhDs in anything that he could have actually asked to come and work for his office. Instead, he asked podcasters and all of this stuff and tried to get people that have been working with him who he's comfortable with to come and work in his office. But there are rules. There are rules about qualification level. And also your party has said it has a principle. Forget the EFF a, um, a decision or, or, or action to take you to the ethics committee. Your party says that it stands for meritocracy. Your party says it wants the best people, most qualified people working in any position, right? So that government can work. Your party has for, since 2021 been going up and down to courts, fighting uh, the ANC to get papers on cater deployment. Why would you contradict that? I think it's just a problem that that's all happening. But I have a question for you guys, right? for uh, the dissection community, right? The, dis the dissection gang. What do you think about these ministers' offices? Are they too big? I, I do think you need a special advisor. Maybe you need a PA. But like to have 11 people working for your office, why are, why are you not just using the resources in your department as a minister? You come in there, there are so many people who've been working there already. Bringing in 11 people from the outside seems to me like a waste a waste. 11 other political appointments, if you will. That's too many. That's too many. Do, what do you think? Do you think that it's not too many? It's reasonable? Do you think that, you know, people should be able to be hired to work for ministers regardless of qualification because it's a political office? Do you think that trust supersedes the, you know, qualification issue because John obviously wants people that he's been working with for a long time that he's comfortable with that know how to work with him or deal with his idiosyncrasies if he has any whatever the case may be what do you think let's have a conversation till the next one